so let's once again go back to the man page and if you notice one very interesting feature is that we can execute a program after we connect to a port or we get a connection to our locally listening netcat server so what use would this be now let's try and imagine what if somebody is going to bind a bash shell onto a port something called like a remote root shell right and then as soon as a client connects to it that client will be able to interact with bash and execute any command it would have if it had logged on to the same system now is this possible pretty much and that is how most of these remote root exploits work by basically binding a shell once the exploit has been executed so that using that shell a virus a worm or for that matter even a hacker can go ahead and do more things on to the victim computer but let's cut this discussion short by saying that let's try and bind bash to a port and try and connect as a client to it and try to execute programs right so the way to go ahead and execute a program for inbound connections would be to use the minus e option as we can see right so let's go ahead and use it Again, port 10,000. Let's make it verbose. So, if you notice, once again, we see our very familiar screen, but there is a slight difference right now. Let's go to the client side terminal and connect to it. Okay, we are connected. Everything looks fine. It says, you know, there's a connection from this IP address and along for that remote port. There is a difference now. Let's try and write ls and put an enter. And if you notice, what we are actually getting is the directory listing of the directory from where netcat was initialized. And that is the slash root directory. Right? Let's run the w command. If you notice now what is happening is, you have actually been given a listing of who is there and what they are doing and so on and so forth. We could run the ps command, what not. So basically by using this very simple command of executing a program as soon as a client connects to you and binding that program to that port, we are able to interactively use that program over a network. And note that as such Bash does not have some sort of a socket capability. So how was this done? Now without getting into too much of programming details, what Netcat is doing is mapping the std out and std error and std in to the socket itself that is 10,000 so that now whenever I send an input here right saying who am I right what is going to happen is this who am I is sent to the std in of the bash which is bound to that shell and when bash replies back to its std out saying root that is once again mapped to the same socket 10,000 and because of which the data is sent out and I get go ahead and get this. So basically it's mapping that socket and std and std out together. So we might look about how to program some sort of a binding of a remote shell later. But for this example it is sufficient to understand that using netcat it is possible to bind any program which has an input output capability to a socket. right? So well that's all for this tutorial, netcat has a couple of other interesting options which you can go ahead and have a look at. But whatever I have discussed here are the most frequently used initializations and most frequently used options along with netcat. Hope this tutorial was useful, thank you very much.